This is one of a collection of video tutorials showing some features of an artificial intelligence language which supports a variety of programming paradigms which are not all covered in standard courses of computer science. This one, like some of the others, shows some of the things that can be done with the pattern matcher that's built in the, into the language POP11. I'm Aaron Sloman. I'm in the University of Birmingham at the School of Computer Science. The text used for this tutorial and including the programs shown and the tests will be found in this web page online. It is also part of the Poplog system and will be one of the teach files. Uh, the demo may be slightly different from the online version. Anyhow, I'm going to try to show how using a pattern matcher to test whether a list of numbers is sorted in increasing uh, order that should have been not area compares with more conventional ways of defining a procedure to check whether a list is sorted. So I'm going to make use of the popular pattern matcher described in the teach matches um, tutorial file and also previously uh, demonstrated in tutorials in the, on this YouTube collection and there's a summary in the help matches file of a lot more features of the matcher than I'm going to show today. So I'll try to show how um, some of the things that can be done in a standard way in POP11 are less intuitively obvious than ways that can be done using the pattern matcher. On the other hand, the pattern matcher may not be so um, efficient and in some cases it may not do all the things you expect, but there's an extension of the pattern matcher called does match, which I will demonstrate below. But for most purposes, the, the standard POP11 pattern matcher is adequate and in those situations it's much faster than does match, but sometimes does match is more efficient, as I'll show you below, and also in some cases it solves problems that the standard matcher matches cannot solve. Okay, suppose we want to test that a list of numbers is in increasing order, and we can define a procedure called, I'm going to switch to the mouse pointer, called sorted, which takes as input a list and returns a result where the input is a list of numbers I just use integers but it could include reals and other numbers and the result is a boolean, namely it should be true or false so the result should be true when the numbers are in non-decreasing order so 1, 1, 3, 4 would be in increasing order uh, so would 1, 2, 3, 4 but not 2, 1, 3, 4 so for the last case it would return the result false so there are some tests that we want our, our sorted procedure to satisfy, but I'll first come down to the definition and then we can check. Now, POP11, like Lisp and Scheme and Prolog and a number of other pro programming languages originally developed for use in AI or AI-related tasks, has uh, built-in support for Lisp processing. And uh, I'm going to use some of the built-in procedures to define a recursive test for whether a list is sorted um, and one of those built-in procedures is length. So we can say if a list contains just the single number 1 or the number 99 then it's already sorted. There's no way the, order, the, the, the numbers can be out of order if there is only one number. Likewise if the list is empty and POP11 has a built-in procedure length which can be applied to lists and other things and it'll return a number and if the number is less than 2 which means it's 0 or 1 then we can say it's already sorted so we can say then true and then down here we'll assign that true to result if it's not if the length is 2 or more then there'll be at least one item in that list which is the head of the list and then the tail of the list will also have a head. So there'll be the first item and the second item. The first item is the head of the list, the second item is the head of the tail of the list. The tail is everything in the list except the first item. In Lisp, head would be 
the function car C A R and in Lisp the tail function TL would be Kidder C D R. But I'm going to use H D for head and TL for tail as that's easier to say, to read and to remember if you're not a Lisp programmer. So we can say if the length of the list is less than two, namely it's naught or one, then the list is already sorted. Otherwise, we look and see if the first two items are in the right order and this less than equal in POP11 means is less than or equal to. So if the first item is less than or equal to the second item, the head of the tail, then we don't yet know for sure that the list is sorted but if the rest of the list apart from the first item is sorted then the whole list must be sorted. So that will come out either true or false depending on whether this thing comes out as true or false. Uh, and uh, whatever it is either this true or the result of doing this will be assigned to result and that will be the result of the procedure. So I'm going to compile this procedure by typing escape C and it says done at the top there. That means I can now go and run these tests. So w when I run the tests uh, the results are going to come out in another window so I'm going to shrink this window to half its size and um, on the first test here if I type escape D it just compiles that line and this thing will print out the result of checking whether the empty list is sorted and this is what it should give. It should give the answer true. So I will do escape D and we got a true in the output file. What about 3, 5? That should also give the answer to. So I'll try escape D and that gives the answer true. Try sorted 5, 5, escape D and that gives the answer true. So you can keep going through some tests. What about sorted 5, 4? That's in the wrong order. So we type escape D and we get false up there. Well, you can probably guess that all the others will work, so we can try a longer one. 1, 3, 6, 9, 10, 14. That just goes up all the way. I can change it. For instance, I can put another 6 in there. And provided I put it before the 9, that will still be sorted. So I type escape D and it comes out true. And what I'm showing you is that in the um, Poplog editor you can play with the example uh, procedure definitions and test um, commands and s see what happens. So here we have another one, 1, 3, 6, 9, 14, 10 and that is not sorted because the 10 come is lower than the 14 and that's false. Well I won't bother with any more. So this, that was this this procedure at work we can find out what it's doing by tracing it and the way you can t tell a procedure to be traced in pop is to type trace and then the name sorted and we can later stop it and say untrace sorted those so those two commands are there and if I do escape D on trace sorted it becomes a trace procedure so what does that do if I ask it if whether uh, sorted 3 5 is true it now in the output window says it's trying to do sorted applied to 3 5 and it's done the test to see if the first two items are in the same order and they are so it tries to sorting the tail it goes therefore into sorting the list containing only 5 but that's got fewer than two items in so it must be true so it comes out and therefore the whole thing is true so it comes out um, saying that one's true and we get the result true. We can do this with a longer example so if I do it with 1, 3, 6, 6, 9, 10, 14 you can see it starts off trying to sort 1, 3, 6, 6 it checks the first two and they're ok so it then tries the tail which is sorted that checks the first two they're ok so it then tries the tail checks the first two they're ok and tries the tail first two are OK, tries to tell, the first two are OK, these two are OK and then it's got a one element list and that's OK so it comes out true and therefore all the things that were waiting to be finished are true and true and true and finally the end one is true. On the other hand if I change this by putting for instance uh, 7 after the 9 
It starts off as before, 1 and 3 are OK, so test 3 onwards. 3 and 6 are OK, so test 6 onwards. 6 and 9 are OK, so tests 9 onwards. But 9 and 7 are not OK, so it comes out false and everything else is false. Um, we can also see that if we had the uh, the problem much earlier, the tracing would have finished earlier. So if I do 1, 3, 2 in there and do escape D, it's trying to test if 1, 3, 2, etc. is sorted. The 1 and 3 are OK, so it tries 3 and 2. And they're not OK, so it says that's false and it comes out. Well, that shows what tracing does. And I'm going to untrace sorted so that if I run it again over here, it'll just give its result. And that was all done by defining sorted in this way. Um, we don't need to have this output local variable with the arrow saying that when you run sorted, it's got an input list and an output result. But it makes it clearer what's happening. And um, uh, in some other languages, for instance, a language like Scheme, you wouldn't bother with the result thing. And therefore, we wouldn't bother to assign anything to result here. And POP11 is the same. You can do it that way if you want to. I'm now going to show a different way of defining a uh, test for sorting which will make use of the matches, pop 11 matches procedure and we'll call the um, procedure um, below we're going to call the procedure um, match sorted okay so it's going to be like sorted except that it'll use a pattern matcher it should produce the same behavior but in order to use it, we need a subsidiary procedure or an auxiliary procedure, which I'm calling descends, which will take a list containing only two elements. So descends takes a list, and it will come out true if the list is of length 2 and the items are not in increasing order. We can express that using the pattern matcher as follows. We can say this list, which is the input to descends, matches and that exclamation mark is part of the syntax for saying how the pattern is to be used which I'm not going to explain here uh, so we want to match this list against a pattern which has got two items query x query y so they're variables and this will only match a list of two items and x will become the first item in that list y will become the second item in the list so if that matches is true, then we can do the second test that y is less than x, namely the um, uh, second item in the list is less than that one. If that happens, if y is less than x, then they are not in increasing order. That's why I've called it descends. And this, this is going to be used to test that there's a counterexample when we try to decide if a list is sorted. In our previous definition of sorted, we checked the, for a counterexample at the beginning and then did a recursive call, checking for a counterexample in the tail and checking for a counterexample in the tail of that, and continued checking down the list. And that was expressed in the syntax using a recursive procedure call. Here, we're going to show that instead of using a rec recursive procedure call, we, we use a picture of what we don't want. And I'll show you how to do that now, looking at the definition of match sorted. So we're going to define match sorted, which takes a list, and it's going to produce a result which is true or false. And it will um, use the pattern matcher again, but in a different way from before. Namely, it's going to use this pattern. And what this pattern says is, we're going to match list against something to see if it's got any number of items that's what the double equals is there to start with and then some sequence of items the double query matches any arbitrary sequence unlike the single query that matches one item which we saw before the double query items means find any sequence in that list such that when we apply the procedure descends to that list of items it produces a true result if that happens 
then this list is not sorted. The list given as input is not sorted. So if this thing is never true, we never find a descending uh, pair of items, then we can say this thing here is not true and that would mean that we get a true result because of the not there which negates this bit being false. So just to go back and compare with the previous definition um, we here matched a list with a pattern which said we want exactly two things where the second one y is less than the first one and if, if that's the case descends will be true. Over here we are saying something a bit more complicated. We want the match to have, to not have, this is what that not is for, should not have in it any portion which is a list of items which satisfies this thing descends. In other words it shouldn't have a portion of two items that are adjacent where the second is smaller than the first. If so it's going down. So I'm going to compile match sorted and we can go and check that it does the right thing. So we'll try apply match sorted to the um, empty list. Uh, sorry I forgot to compile descends and I got an error message that descends was not a procedure. So I put the, the editor cursor in descends type escape C and that's compiled. So we can now try to run match sorted Let's go and clear the output window. Clear. OK. Run match sorted. And that's true. Match sorted with 3.5 is true before. 5.5, five, true as before. 5.4, it's false. It found a pair that was descending. What about this one? That's true. There are no pairs that are descending. What about this one? That's false. There's a pair that's defending, descending. It found the 14.10. How do I know? Well, I can trace matches. So I'm going to run match sorted again with that list and see what happens. Now we're going to get a surprise. It does a lot of testing. So we're first trying to match this whole thing, the, the, the list 136914, against this pattern. Um, never mind the bit of complexity here because it's showing you that there's a variable items which are so far undefined. Um, and in order to um, uh, check whether there's anything here that's okay, it tries all the possible sublists uh, initially with nothing before them, then with one before them, then with one three before them, then with one three six before them, then with one three six nine before them, then with one three six nine fourteen, and so on. And for each of those it looks to see whether it can find something on the right with a descending order and eventually it does and I'm not going to go through all of that but this is showing you that this is not very efficient eventually it finds something which is the right at the end of the list two numbers 1410 where the match is true namely it finds the two items which are in descending order and because that's true, the whole thing comes out false. Namely, the whole list here is not in ascending order. So what that shows us is that we can specify in a sort of pictorial way. I'm going to untrace matches. Um, I don't really need the semicolon at the end of it, so I won't put one there. And we can do, for instance, match sorted on this. And it comes out false. Why? because we have 1, 3, 6, 9, 14 and then there's a 10 so it went down. Um, if we go to this one it comes out true 1, 3, 6, 9, 14, 8 it's just going up all the way. So I turned off the tracing and that hides all the complex stuff that's going on. Um, we can instead of tracing matches just trace descends. So I'm going to do escape D with descends 
and try it on uh, one of the shorter lists so let's try it on this one and um, the sends is given all kinds of sublists from inside the given list here it gives them one one three one three six three six nine and so on eventually it's given fourteen ten and only then does it come out true um, sorry I didn't do this one I did that one so it didn't come out true at all but if I come down to this one instead and do that eventually it'll come out true when it gets to 1410 and therefore the whole thing will come out false so that one didn't have any of descends tests coming out true they were all false so that whole thing was true and over here the descends was true in one case so this whole thing was false it wasn't completely non-descending it wasn't completely ascending all right let's untrace descends and carry on so although this is useful in a way in that it shows you a picture of what it's looking for namely it wants to check that the list given as input to match sorted doesn't have this kind of picture namely it's got something and then some other kinds of things and in between a little bit which is descending intuitively that's what we want but it's very inefficient because it tries all possible lengths for this bit and for this bit and for that bit tries dividing the list up and so so I'm now going to show you how by using the <coughs> modified version of the pop 11 pattern matcher uh, does match we can actually do something much more efficient and get the same desired result so that's all just showing you what I've already uh, told you about does match is described in a pop blog library program to uh, documentation program help does match which is also available on the web in the pop blog uh, project directory with uh, subject help and does match so does match has a different syntax from matches in the case of matches you just put the word matches between a list and a pattern a list is sometimes called a datum datum and a pattern however with does match we have list does match pattern where condition and this enables us to look for something that satisfies the pattern and then check that we've got it right the condition we're looking for is satisfied if not it'll go back and try another match um, and we find that doing it that way we can get something that's much more efficient than what we had before so I'm going to show you how to use does match uh, to define a procedure called does match sorted so I have to load the does match library it's not a built-in part of pop 11 I put the cursor on the users does match line and type escape D that's now compiled it says done up there so we're defining this procedure does match sorted instead of just sorted and it's going to take a list of numbers and it'll produce a result which is true or false so let's go down to the definition and come back and test it as before we have as input a list and then as output a result which is going to be true or false and now instead of looking for a list a single item which is in the middle of somewhere in the middle of the list and of arbitrary length we can be more precise we can say we're going to try to match the given list against this pattern that has two adjacent items so in the picture we say it's two separate items the query means one item of the list the other query means another item of the list and then we can have anything before the first item and anything after the second item whereas previously we first had to build up lists and test them here we're not going to build up lists but we're going to having got those two items out of the list we now do a test that they have the requirement that item one is bigger than item two and if that's the case then we take the negation in other words if there's an item that's bigger than its successor then it's not sorted so we will say 
not whatever this is not turned two into false and false into true is assigned to a result so this procedure will return that result experienced programmers might prefer to express that in a more economical way more elegant way I'm just showing some of the features of the language here so I'll compile this escape C and let's try it on some tests as before we can try it on the empty list and we get that sorted because it doesn't find the two elements in the wrong order what about a list of two elements that's true what about the same element repeated does match sorted that's also true so the only thing we're going to uh, rule out is bigger followed by smaller in, as in this case and that's false what about this thing? We have 1, 3, 6, 9, 10, 14. They all seem to be going up in increasing order. And that's true. And here we have the last two reversed. So we come down there. And that's false. Here's a long one. And that's false. And there's another one. Why is that false? Because it goes 1, 3, 6, 9, 14, 10. And then there's a lot more in the end. And um, likewise here it's all in decreasing order so that's false so let's see what happens if we trace the matcher and go to some of those longer things to see if it's wasting so much time doing lots of matches trace matches that's done so let's first go to the earlier one um, if we try the empty list it doesn't get as far as matching because it doesn't find two items with this thing it'll find a couple of items uh, something wrong here, why have I sorry it does match that way, I'm not using matches uh, forget about that, I can't trace does match um, because it's part of this complex expression involving where as well but what we can be sure of is that it won't do as many complicated things as the others and we'll see that in a different way because we're going to um, uh, generalize does match where we'll put a little test in here and we'll trace that test and that will show us what's going on now it's clear that you could rewrite this for another kind of list sorting function for instance you want to sort items which are not numbers but something else like words or strings you could replace this test where item 1 is greater than item 2 with something else like a test for a word being alphabetically before or after another word or if this is a list of strings and we want to sort them according to length we could have a test here where the test is length of item 1 is greater than length of item 2 or something like that so what I'm going to show you now is that we can take this structure and replace it with a more general structure so we'll have a list where instead of having the test built in over here we will have it as an extra input to does match sorted so I'll call it does match sorted any which means it won't just sort numbers it'll sort anything and then whenever you run it you have to supply the comparison test which supports which compares the uh, items in the list so let's first go to where that is defined so we're going to define a, a procedure called does match sorted any which takes a list and a test for two things being in the wrong order previously the wrong order was greater than and now we can have any test we like as long as we give it a predicate which takes two things and returns a true or false result and if it returns a re true result then things are in the wrong order and the item and the list will not be accepted as sorted so how do we define it well it's very similar to what we had before except that after the where instead of where item 2 was greater than item 1 we just say where wrong order item 1 item 2 or if you find that easier to recognize I'll put it back in a straight line so this will produce result true
provided it's not the case that this list matches this pattern with one item and then another item where those items are in the wrong order. So as before, we're still using a picture, but we're picking out two things from the we're using the picture to pick out two things and then we're going to test them. Then we'll try another two things and test them. So I'm going to compile that escape C that's compiled. Um, and go on to where we can test it by giving it um, something in here which is going to be a predicate which will recognize things in the wrong order. So one way to do it is we can use the greater than test as before except that instead of writing it inline in the code we give it as an input. To do that we have to use this non-op thing and that's a feature of POP11. If you have an infix operator like greater than which can go between two inputs then if you want to use it not to run but to be named so that it can be given to something else to run or assigned to something you use non-op. So here we'll use does match sorted with the empty list and non-op greater and it will should give the answer true because there's nothing in there which which satisfies this non-op greater than test. So it did give us the answer true. What about 135? We can try the non-op greater thing and it's still true. 13546 well, it'll should try one three three five five four, and then find that that is true, that five greater than four, and then the the whole thing will fail because that one was true, and it came out false, and it will work with big numbers, and so on. Um, with these numbers, it comes out false because there's ten thousand and one followed by ten thousand. And likewise, we can check whether something is sorted in decreasing order. So we don't have to redefine the whole procedure to test if things are in decreasing order. Instead of using non-op greater than to say that we found a counterexample, we use non-op less than to say we found a counterexample. So we can try the empty list. Well, that's got no counterexamples so we now have shown that the empty list is sorted both in increasing order and in decreasing order and we knew that before because any list of length 0 or 1 is sorted. What about 135? Is that sorted in in decreasing order? That's to say will this thing, non-op, find a counterexample? Well it does find a counterexample. 13 is a counterexample because 1 is less than 3 and that's what we're trying to rule out. So we get the answer false for that test. That 135 is not sorted pro properly. What about 5321? That's true, because it doesn't find any counterexample. 65433211, this has got repetitions. That's also true. Everything's in non increasing order or decreasing order. What about this one? That's false. Why? Because we have 6, 5, 2, and then it goes up at that step, and so on. Right. Um, let's go from numbers to words. We, we're going to use the same does match sorted any uh, procedure, but with a different comparator function over here. Um, to use uh, to test a list of words. So here we can have a comparator function which takes two words, word1 and word2, and it's going to use the built-in POP11 procedure alpha before and see if word2 is not alphabetically before word1 if word 2 is not alphabetically before word 1 then word 1 is the same as or comes alphabetically before word 2 so we're going to use this to test as a recognized uh, a recognizer for um, words that are uh, exceptions to uh, being in reverse alphabetic order so we want to see if this list pear fig apple 
satisfies alpha after. In other words, um, if anything that comes after something else has alphabetically after it, then we have a counterexample to the thing being sorted in the way that we're looking for. So pear, fig, apple. Oops, I forgot to forgot to compile alpha after. So I put the cursor in there, escape C. Come and try that again. And it says that's true. It's in descending alphabetic order. Pear comes after fig. Fig comes after apple. So it's in reverse alphabetic order because it doesn't find anything where an item and its successor are in the normal alphabetic order. What about pear, fig, elephant, apple? That's also true. What about pear, fig, elephant, apple, banana? That's false. Why is it false? Because after apple it started going up because B is after A. We can trace alpha after to see what's going on. Trace alpha after. Done. It's traced. So I'm going to redo this command. Does match sorted any with pear, fig, elephant, apple, banana, and the alpha after test. So what happens is it first tries pear and fig and it comes out false. So it hasn't found a counterexample. It then tries fig elephant, comes out false, hasn't found a counterexample. Tries elephant apple, comes out false, hasn't found a counterexample. Applied to apple banana, it comes out true because banana is alphabetically after apple and therefore it's found a counterexample to the descending order test. Sorry, it was, it was this one we were dealing with. Um, if we try this one, what should happen? Well, it goes. Um, let's let's try pear uh, tomato fig elephant apple, and here immediately it finds pear tomato the first two. That test comes out true, according to alpha after. So it's found a counterexample right at the beginning, and it didn't bother to test any of the others. So that shows you the way in which does match sorted can be very quick at deciding, just as the original recursive definition can be quick at deciding. I want to show you that POP11 allows you to have uh, procedures like um, the comparator procedures and the sorting procedures that apply to lists containing mixtures of items of different types. So we're now going to define a predicate that can be given two items which can be either a one letter word or a, or a positive integer. So if it's a word we're going to ask it's a one letter word um, is it a, a, a just a vowel? So here we're going to use a little test in there to see if item 1 is one of A, E, I, U, O, U in lowercase, A, E, I, O, U in uppercase. If it is, then that's part of what means, part of what we're looking for, namely that item 1 is a vowel. We want to detect cases where a vowel is followed by a number that is not an even number. Okay, so how can we do that? We can say item 1 is a word, is word item 1, is integer item 2. The length of item 1 is 1, so it's a word of only one thing. If it's longer, we're going to ignore it. And we, it's a vowel because it's one of these. And item 2 remained on divisible by 2, on division by 2, is not equal to naught. Uh, sorry, I said an even number. It's looking for an odd number. The remainder is not equal to naught on div division by 2. Um, just to show you how that REM thing works, I'll give you a type in a couple of tests here. Let's try 6 REM 2 and print out the result. That's naught. What about 7 REM 2? That's 1. So 7 is an odd number. In fact, REM can be used with. Uh, 
any numbers we can give it for instance 77 rem 10 print that out and it says the remainder 7 as I'm sure you knew and if I change this to 5 the remainder should be different it's 2 but if you use rem 2 we get either 0 or 1 as the remainder and if it's 0 then it's an even number if it's 1 it's an odd number so we're using that test in here namely item rem 2 is not equal to naught is another way of saying item ring 2 is equal to 1 and that makes it uh, is a test for item 2 being an odd number so if we have vowel followed by an odd number then this thing will come out true we can test that let's go into this comment here I'm first going to compile it define vowel compiled it and then run a little test vowel odd and I'll put in a one letter word A and the number 4 and ask it to print out what that is escape D it says false so it's not a vowel followed by an odd number suppose I change the 4 to a 5 it's true so there it is a vowel followed by an odd number suppose I change the A to a B it's false it's not a vowel followed by an odd number because it's a B there and if it's a B it doesn't matter what comes after it I can put a an even number after it 6 and it'll still be false because it's not a vowel followed by an odd number if that thing's not a vowel and B isn't a vowel and likewise I can change A to uppercase and do that test and that would come out true I can change that A to uppercase and that would come out false as before and that's because our list of vowels includes both the lowercase ones and the uppercase ones just to be clear this is a list of one character words so that's the word A, the word E, the word I and uh, we've now got this procedure which is a test for vowel and an odd number and we can use that in does match sorted any so if we try it with the empty list that doesn't find a uh, vowel followed by an odd number because there isn't one what about 15, 70, 6, 9 there are only numbers in there so it shouldn't find a vowel followed by an odd number and doesn't so that's true A, B, C, D, E that's only got letters words rather so it can't find a word followed by an odd number what about A3, B4, C5? Will that have a vowel followed by an odd number? Well, you've probably already spotted more than one. So that is not something that satisfies the kind of structure that we've defined by saying there is no vowel followed by an odd number. Um, we can trace Vowlog to see what it was doing. Okay, there's the trace command. And if I run it on that, rerun this thing, we'll see Vowlog being tested. So on this one here, right at the beginning it found A3, and therefore Vowlog came out true. Therefore that refuted the test for whether this thing's in the right, got the right properties. But if I change A4 to A6, it then goes through doing a lot of other things it does 6b, b4, c5 and so on and only when it gets to e7 over there does the vowel odd come out true that's the only case where it finds a vowel followed by an odd number but as long as it finds one the whole thing comes out false so we can untrace vowel odd so that shows that we can define this generic procedure for testing that lists have some property uh, which can be refuted the property test can be refuted by finding two items that don't have the right relationship um, if we want to repeatedly use a test for items being increasing we can 
combine the procedure does match sorted any we can define combine that procedure with the non op greater than thing in this definition what this does is partially apply this procedure to that procedure and this procedure normally requires two inputs so once this has been combined with that only one more input is needed so we define the procedure called increasing which is this thing partially applied to non op greater than and then we have the end defined so I'm going to mark that control D it's defined and I can likewise define decreasing by checking does match sorted any looking for this count example so we can now test whether one two four six seven eight is increasing and it comes out true one two four six three seven eight is increasing and that comes out false up there and is this decreasing using that definition of decreasing thousand five 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 two thirty it looks like it's decreasing and it comes out true up there as it should and what about this one ten thousand five 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 six hundred okay it goes up there so it should come out false and it does come out false well there are a lot more there's a lot more documentation expanding on the information that I've given you um, this ability to take a generic procedure and partially apply it to another procedure to produce a third procedure is available not only in pop 11 but in functional languages um, and uh, it does allow it does make it easy to define some very powerful procedures that handle a wide range of situations and they do that by being given special component procedures like these ones here and the other one for um, uh, val odd that's another specialization uh, to turn the very general procedure into a more specialized procedure and I think a lot of human learning is like that we start off learning special cases and when we've mastered them we may start realizing there's a pattern linking a number of special cases and if we can abstract that pattern and turn it into a new competence that can now be given not only a problem but also a strategy that new competence can apply that strategy like applying vowel odd or va applying less than in order to solve um, problems that were not pro solved before and this is very common in mathematics and in programming you get a lot of examples you see something common you generalize to cover all those cases and then you find you've got something that covers a lot more cases than you'd started with so in this case the vowel odd thing was uh, something that turned out to handle uh, tests for properties global properties of lists which are rather different from checking that they're in an order but nevertheless it's using the same logical structure as that test so it might be useful in some cases anyway uh, there's a lot more information online in the poplog system and on the website where this tutorial will be there will be other things on the matcher and on pop11 and on other kinds of uses for pop11